In this uh, tutorial, we will look at a caution in using kinetic analysis. When we determine rate constants, then we must pay attention to two items. One, the analytical precision of measurement. And second, the change in reactant species that is monitored. Let's look at this uh, table that shows us the analytical precision. This is the precision in uh, using any type of analytical measurement and the percent error in reaction rate constant. And that percent error depends on how much change in the reactant species was monitored uh, during the time the experiment was conducted. So if the analytical precision is low, then one must let more change in the reactant species to occur. Otherwise, the error in estimation of rate constant will be very high. Let's uh, look at this uh, table. Note that if the analytical precision is uh, plus minus 0.1, uh, that means that uh, you have a very good precision. And uh, let's say that you followed the change in reactant species up to 20%, uh, then you will have a percent error of 0 0.7 in the calculation of reaction rate constant. On the other hand, if for the same change in reactant species monitored, 20%, if your precision was plus minus 10, uh, so the precision was not very good in measuring uh, your quality attribute, then the percent error in uh, predicting reaction rate constant will be 70. Another way to look at this is that for the same analytical precision, let's say plus minus 2, if you follow the change in the reactant species up to 5%, the error will be 56% in predicting rate constant, but that error will decrease to, let's say, 6% if you followed the reactant species up to 50% change, as we see in this table. So this table is very useful in determining what is the percent error in calculating reaction rate constant based both on the analytical precision of measuring a quality attribute and how much of the change in the reactant species was monitored. Another caution in using kinetic analysis is how much of the quality attributes change you should measure in a shelf life study. In analyzing data to determine whether you have a zero or first order rate constant, the quality attribute must have changed sufficiently. Otherwise, the selection of the order of reaction and also, of course, the subsequent predictions of the concentrations, let's say, of that quality attribute will be flawed. Let's look at this with a diagram. We will plot remaining quality attribute versus storage time. Recall that the zero order kinetics gives you a straight line when the quality attribute is changing during time. So we have a straight line here. And if you had a first order kinetics, then the change in concentration will follow an exponential plot. For the beginning part, it may appear to be linear, but then it diverges and follows an exponential plot. Looking at the numbers, uh, for a quality change that follows first-order kinetics, if only 60% of the change was monitored, then when you plot the data, you may wrongfully conclude that it is a zero-order kinetics. Note that after the 60% change, the two curves are diverging. So if in reality, the reaction follows a first-order kinetics, and you assume that it is zero order because if you did not follow the reaction sufficiently, then your predictions will be flawed because you will be using a linear reduction in that 
quality attribute where the quality attribute will be decreasing only in an exponential manner and the values will be much higher than what a zero order kinetics may predict. So in summary, it is important that the change in the quality attribute must be determined for a sufficiently long period of time uh, to determine whether you have a zero order or a first order kinetics. If you measure that change in the quality attribute for a very short time period, it could give you a wrong estimate of the true order of reaction.